In the previous several lectures, we discussed two types of muscles in the human body. We discussed the skeletal muscle and the cardiac muscle. The final type of muscle found in the human body is the smooth muscle, and this will be the focus of this lecture. So the smooth muscle is a type of muscle that is found in blood vessels and lymph vessels. It's found in the bronchioles of the lungs. It's found in the stomach, the small and large intestine. We can find it in the iris portion of the eye. We can also find it in places like the bladder and the uterus as well as other parts of the body. Now, smooth muscles are innervated by the autonomic system, autonomic nervous system, just like the cardiac muscles. And this basically means that just like cardiac muscle is involuntary, smooth muscle is also involuntary. And that means we have no way to actually consciously control the movement of smooth muscle. Now, recalling our discussion on skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle, we said that these two types of muscles consist of individual units we call sarcomeres. And these sarcomeres give skeletal and cardiac muscle striations. Now, on the other hand, smooth muscles do not have these striations, and that's because they do not consist of these units we call sarcomeres. Instead, throughout the entire smooth muscle cell, we basically have a network of filaments that is responsible for the contraction of that muscle cell as a whole. So, to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So, this is a diagram of a single smooth muscle cell. We have the membrane shown in black, we have the nucleus shown in blue, and notice we only have a single nucleus in any given smooth muscle cell. And that means smooth muscle cells are uninucleated, just like cardiac muscle cells. Now, we also notice this network of three different types of filaments. So we have the thin filament and the thick filament that are also found in the cardiac and skeletal muscle. And we have a new type of filament known as the intermediate filament that is not found in skeletal and cardiac muscle. Now, thin filament is composed of actin, the protein actin, while thick filament is composed of the protein myosin. Now, the intermediate filament is composed predominantly of two types of proteins. We have desmin as well as a protein known as vimentin. Now, we also have these regions we call the, de uh, the dense bodies, which are shown with these brown dots. So the green portion are the intermediate filaments, the red portion are the thick filaments, the purple portion is the thin filament, and these brown regions are called dense bodies. And dense bodies are composed of a protein known as alpha actinin. So basically, the contraction of the thin filament and the thick filament shown in this diagram causes these dense bodies to basically move closer and these dense and these dense bodies are also connected to one another via these green sections our intermediate filaments so when the thin filament slides along our thick filament let's say these two dense bodies they move closer together and that brings these dense bodies and all the other dense bodies also closer together and notice some of these filaments are also attached to the membrane of the cell. So when we have the contraction taking place, this network of filaments basically contracts uniformly and that causes the entire cell to basically shrink inwards and become smaller in size. So we have this contraction process taking place that is a result of this network of three types of filaments. So once again, there are three types of filaments. We have thin filaments, we have thick filaments, and we have intermediate filaments. So the contraction of the thin and thick filaments causes our dense bodies to move closer, which causes the shortening of intermediate filaments found throughout the entire cell. And since some of these filaments are connected to the membrane of the cell, what it ultimately causes is the contraction and the shrinkage of the entire cell as a whole. So basically it contracts in the following fashion. Now, 
There are two main types of arrangements of our muscle cells inside the human body. One of these arrangements is known as the single unit smooth muscle, also known as the visceral smooth muscle. And the other type of arrangement is known as the multi unit smooth muscle arrangement. So let's begin by defining what a single unit smooth muscle is. So basically, this is the most common type of arrangement of smooth muscles inside our body. So single unit smooth muscles consist of an innervating neuron that basically innervates a single or several cells in a group or a collection of cells as shown in the following diagram. So we have a single neuron, the axon. The axon splits into uh, these two sections, these two groups, and only one of these cells, this cell here and this cell here is actually innervated by that neuron. All the other cells, this cell, this cell, and this cell, and these other cells are not actually connected to our neuron directly. So in our single unit smooth muscle, what we have are gap junctions. So all these different types of cells that are connected are connected via these intracellular connections known as gap junctions. And what these gap junctions do is they basically allow the movement of ions through the cells and that allows the propagation of our action potential. So what that means is as our action potential travels through the axon from the autonomic nervous system, it basically innervates these two cells. And these two cells basically undergo that contraction and that causes the action potential to spread through the other cells that are connected via the gap junction. So that means this entire structure essentially contracts as a whole, as a single unit. And that's why these are called single unit smooth muscles. Now, single unit smooth muscles are found in places like the uterus. Why? Well, because when the woman is given birth, the uterus has to contract as a single unit. And that's why all the smooth muscles are are arranged into this single unit smooth muscle arrangement. Now other places where we find this type of arrangement is the stomach, the small intestine, our uh, bladder, as well as small arteries and veins. Now, the last thing I want to mention about this type of arrangement is the fact that just like certain cardiac cells in the heart are capable of, of displaying a type of activity known as myogenic activity, single unit smooth muscles can also exhibit the myogenic activity. And what that basically means is uh, this these cells inside the single unit smooth muscle can basically contract without the input from our nervous system. So even if we don't actually um, receive a signal from the nervous system, these cells can basically contract independently and that means they're myogenic. So once again, the single unit smooth muscle is the most common type of arrangement of smooth muscles in the human body. Single unit smooth muscles consist of an innervating neuron that causes one or several of the smooth muscles to contract. The action, the, the action potential then travels through the other smooth muscles via gap junctions between adjacent cells. So basically, as soon as the action potential is received by this cell, shown in red, it then splits to the other cell and the same thing happens in this particular case. So this, ad, um, this red arrow basically describes the movement of our action potential. So this sort of arrangement allows the group of smooth muscles to contract as a single unit as a whole. Now, single unit smooth muscles also display myogenic activity. And this means that they can contract without the input of the nervous system. And these types of arrangements are found in places like the uterus, in our stomach, in the small intestine, as well as in small arteries and veins. So now let's move on to the second type of arrangement known as the multi-unit smooth muscle. Now, the multi-unit smooth muscle is a less common type of arrangement of our smooth muscle. So basically, in this case, every single nerve, um, every single smooth muscle cell in this multi-unit section is innervated by a neuron. So we have 
each and every one of these smooth muscle cells is connected to some type of axon terminal of a neuron. So we have these two neurons and each one of these cells are basically connected. So what this basically means is if an action potential spreads to this axon and causes these three uh, uh, smooth muscle cells to contract, that does not mean that these neighboring cells, these cells will also contract. So that means the contraction of these smooth muscles is independent of the contraction of these neighboring smooth muscles. So this is what basically distinguishes the multi-unit smooth muscle from the single unit or visceral smooth muscle. Now, where we find these types of smooth muscles, well, we basically find them in the smooth muscle in the iris of our eye. We also find them in large arteries and we find them in places like our uh, bronchioles found inside our lungs.